Greetings everyone! Today we're going to model this spherical bearing in SOLIDWORKS. The bearing will consist of a race with a Teflon liner and a spherical ball that goes in the center. We'll start by making the spherical ball and then the race, adding on the liner to create a multi-body part, and then we'll put it all together and in an assembly. To create the spherical bearing ball, we're going to open up a new part, and we're going to start with a basic revolve. Doesn't matter which plane you start with, we'll start with the right. We are going to make a circle. Now the ball outer diameter is 0.813 inches. So, 0.813 inches and we are going to create a line that goes across the equator of the circle here and we are just going to trim. Basically what we're going to do is just do a, a quick revolve here and do a center line. There you go. And exit the sketch. Go to Features, go to Revolve, and now we have our sphere that we're going to use for the ball. Now these spherical bearing balls are usually made of a copper, so oh, keeping up the wrong thing. <laughs> so we'll set this to a basic copper. Okay. So now we have our raw material here and we're just going to cut away at it using a subtractive design intent. So we'll go and do cut extrude and we're going to do this on the right face and we're going to create a center rectangle here. And we want the width to be the width of the ball. So that is 0.500 inches. And we want the top edge here to be tangent with the edge of the sphere. Hit the green checkbox. Exit the sketch. We want this to be mid-plane, so we want to cut it on both ends rather than just one. Now the way it, the way the cut is currently set up, it will cut away the inside, uh, basically the area encompassed by the shaded uh, square or the shaded cube. But if we hit this flip side cut, flip side to cut, it'll cut away on the outside which is what we want. We want to flatten those ends. And we just need to do or enter in the through hole here. So we'll do a sketch on the end face of the ball. And we'll set this through hole diameter to be 0 0.500 inches. Exit. Extrude cut. And we can leave it at blind, or we can just hit through all. And voila! Add some chamfers. Ooh, not that big. <laughs> Let's see, according to the catalog page, the chamfer should be about 0 0.025 on average in depth. So we'll replicate that. Do that on both sides. Hit the green check. And voila! Our spherical bearing ball is complete. For the next step, we will make the race with the liner.
And now that we have our ball put together, we'll uh, model the race up. So we are going to start by making a sketch on the front plane, a circle, and we are going to set this to one inch. Exit the sketch, and we're going to extrude boss base. Do a mid plane because I like to keep the top right and front plane centered on the part as best I can. And we are going to set the distance here to the race width, which is 0.39 inches. Hit the green checkbox. Okay, so now we are going to do a revolve cut to create the spherical race ID. So we are going to do a cut on the right plane. And the spherical race ID is 0.823 inches. Hit the green checkbox. And we draw a line here. Basically we're going to do a cut in the shape of a sphere, but if we just leave the revolve as a circle it will be self-intersecting and cause an error. So we need to draw a line across its center and cut away at half of it. I just drew in the, uh, the center line for the revolve. And we're going to go up here to trim, power trim, and just cut away the bottom half there. And hit the green checkbox and exit the sketch. And everything looks good. So we will hit the green checkbox again. And there we have it. Now the last thing we have to put in is our staking groove. The staking groove is used when the bearing is being installed a tool actually deforms the metal of the bearing, kind of like the top of a soda can around its mating part so the bearing is locked in place. So we are going to make a sketch on the right plane. And first thing we're going to do is do a center line. Now we are going to just make a little V here. Now the staking groove is rounded at the bottom, and to do this, a little trick with the line segments. Actually, let me show you again so you can see better. So you make a line. Now if you drag your cursor, you'll create another line. But what we actually want is a tangent arc. So if we bring the cursor back to this endpoint here, and then extend it out again, voila, it gives us a tangent arc. And then we go back to a line. That's a nice little shortcut SolidWorks built in. Okay, we want to make sure the arc is tangent to this line. We're going to do another center line down the center of the staking groove profile. Like that. And we want to make sure these two lines are symmetrical to one another. So we'll hit the symmetrical there. Green checkbox. Okay. Now let's add some dimensions here. So we know the radius on the bottom is 0 0.01 inches and we know the position or the staking groove diameter which is the diameter from one end to the other would be 0.875 
We're, we are going to need half of that for this dimension. So we're going to do 0.875 divided by 2. Okay. And last but not least, we need the staking groove depth. Now, when I click on the arch, it's going to default to the center point there. I'll show you another trick here. Hit OK. Now, if you click on the dimension that goes from the line to the arch, and you go to the leaders tab, you have the option down here for the arc condition. You can set it to center, min, or max. It's currently at center now. Min is putting it at where the projected arc would go at a minimal distance from the line up here. And max is the maximum distance from the arc to the line. That's what we want. And we want to set that to 0.0. Five, five. Hit OK. Oh, and of course the angle between the lines is going to be set to 60.00 degrees. And voila! We now have a fully defined sketch for the staking groove. Exit the sketch. And we do a revolve cut. For the axis of revolution, we are going to select the center axis here. And hit the green checkbox. And voila! Now we just need to mirror it over to the other side. So we're going to hit the mirror command. We have the feature already selected. We need a mirror face or plane. So we are going to select the front plane here, because that cuts through the center of the part. And hit the green checkbox. See, that's why I like having my base plane centered on the part, because it makes doing things like mirrors and patterns a lot easier. Alright, so now we have a staking groove on both ends. We have to set the material. So let's set it to AS, IS304, it's a standard stainless. Green checkbox. Alright, so we have the metal portion of our race. We are now going to create a multi-body part from this component to add in the liner. Now we're going to go to our surfaces tab. and. We want to create a surface off of this spherical surface here, and then we're going to thicken it to create the liner part. So we go and we select Offset Surface. We actually set the offset to zero, because we want them, the surface to be overlapping with this part face, and we select the part face. Now you see this unique pattern here where it's kind of choppy, that's a good indicator that your surface is overlapping another uh, part face. Hit the green checkbox. Now you can't see it, but there's a surface there. Also, if you look up here, you'll see we have one surface body and one solid body. Let's rename this one race. There we go. Now we are going to thicken the surface body using the thicken command on the surfaces tab. And you have a few options here. You can thicken one side, you can thicken two side or both sides, or thicken the opposite side. We want to thicken it towards the center of the part, and we want to set the thickness to 0 0.005 and hit the green checkbox. Okay. Oop. I messed something up. So what I forgot to do was uncheck this box here that says merge results. See if that's checked it'll just add on to the solid body. But we want to turn this into a multi-body part. 
So we need to uncheck that and hit the green check. So now we have our race and we have this other solid body, which we'll call liner. And we can right click and edit the material. And we'll just create a generic uh, glass fiber material here. And close it out. But we want to adjust the appearance as well. So we're going to right click and go to appearances, body, and normally these liners are a cloth, almost like a Teflon. So we'll set it to this beige cloth here. That's pretty close to what it would look like. This is just for appearances. And hit the green checkbox. And save. And there we go. We have our bearing race. All right, now we're in a new assembly here. We will select the race and go to insert components insert components and we have to browse and select the ball click OK now the race is fixed but we want it again centered about the planes it is not so we're actually going to right click on the race and go to float so now both the race and the ball can be moved freely and we are just going to align the base planes for the race to the base planes for the assembly so we need the top plane of the race to the top plane of the assembly right plane to right plane and front plane to front plane. Okay. And now we just have to mate the ball into the race. So we're going to click the spherical surface of the ball and the spherical ID of the race. Do a concentric mate. And That's it, we are done. We have assembled our spherical bearing. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to get notifications about future videos.